Hey everybody, it's me again. Here I am with yet another episode of Tales from Behind the DM Screen. Uh, so this one might be a little bit of a longer episode. So for those of you who um, have reached out to me and very kindly said, Hey, I was just getting on the treadmill and I was looking for something to listen to or I've got a lunch hour or I got a long commute. And there's a lot of you that have reached out and said that. And um, well, there, here you go. This is one that's probably going to take a little bit of time for you to parse through and uh, really digest. So uh, here we go. Um, so <laughs> I, I don't really like talking about... Um, uh, role-playing game sessions that didn't work, right? I don't like I don't like like singling out um, situations where there were bad sessions or bad times, and 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 the reason for that is because I mean, for the most part, the people in these stories that I'm going to tell you here real quickly um, are going to be uh, uh, like they meant they meant well. <laughs> if you will, uh, when it came time to tell their story and, and tell their campaign. They, they, they did not go into this to for people to have a bad time or anything like that. It just, for whatever reason, things just didn't work, things didn't click, and, and, and what have you. And in the end, um, here we had, like, you know, just like some of the worst uh, role-playing games, uh, campaigns, or sessions, whatever, um, that I've ever been a part of. So, uh, first one up uh, is is a uh, is a shadow run, and I do apologize. I, I do I'm going to take drinks every once in a while with my diet doctor Shasta here, uh, just to wet my whistle. So bear with me. But um, uh, the first one up uh, was a shadow run campaign. Uh, so I, I I really like shadow run. I think it is probably um, a, a mixture of the theme. And also the fact that you you really get to just kind of make a super cool character. Um, the the character creation process, at least of the editions that I played, uh, really focused on uh, like what kind of character I'm going to make, and then you just kind of got to create whatever the heck you wanted. Uh, I've, I've made just the, the basic Troll Street Samurais in that game. Um, I have made mages that were uh, completely focused around the idea of astral combat. Um, I, I made shamans, I made snipers, uh, you know, I, I, I ran the gamut of, of, of all the different things that I created. And I never ran a campaign. Uh, I always thought about running a Shadowrun campaign, but it was just I don't know, maybe because the world had too much going on or what have you, I just didn't uh, get into that. But what I, I, I did love, I loved the lore and I loved everything about it as far as that goes. Like the fact that like, you know, the Yakuza and um, the corporations and the mafia and all these different, you know, warring factions of, of things, the, the person running the game really had... Um, a cornucopia of options uh, available to them as far as the, uh, at their disposal. Anyway, so uh, a buddy uh, of mine, it was one of those weird things where a friend of a friend kind of situation, uh, we were playing lots of role-playing games at that time, we needed more players, and I happened to be work delivering pizzas at a pizza hut at that time, and uh, one of my people that I worked with there, who was just the guy that I talked to and was funny and we enjoyed each other, this guy named Ben, um, he... Uh, he her overheard and and he kind of just said hey if you ever need another player or something let me know and so then it was one of those things where it was like all right you know fine you know like hey we let ben know that um the option was available and uh, he joined the group and we played some things together and what have you and then eventually he, it was time to for another new campaign to start up and he offered to run a shadow run campaign and so cool awesome i remember i made this like uh um, this like street gang member um, who I said he drives around in a van uh, that, that that's covered in Boris Vallejo uh, art uh, all over each of the sides, you know, just like and the you know, loud rap music coming out of the uh, the, the 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 windows and and uh, like yeah, I mean, just I, I, I had fun with him I, I, and he was I don't remember the character's name or anything like that to begin with or anything. But anyway, we ended up in our little group of people and there was, you know, there was a mage and there was a shaman and there was a street samurai and there was a hacker and there was a rigger and all those things. And uh, 
we 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 were playing it and I, I remember like the the combination of the the different um missions we had just made no sense whatsoever it was like we need you to go here and steal this old 747 so we went to like an airplane uh uh, we went to an airplane graveyard and got that. And then it was like, oh, we need you to go here and we need you to steal a, a bunch of um, uh, titanium white paint. And so we did that. And then there was this one where it was like, they asked us to go and like get us a bunch of rust. And it was like, literally like rust? It was like, yeah, we need you to go get rust. And so we went and did that. And there were a couple of other ones too. I don't remember everything, but I mean, we went to all these processes. And then I remember there was like some big fight on the top and, and and Ben was doing a good enough job of like you know telling the stories and whatever and it was it was a little bit weird and maybe we were just used to his style and he wasn't used to our style but whatever we, we kept showing up we kept playing and it wasn't so much that like the way the campaign went is that like it, it's how it ended so all of a sudden we we're in this situation where like like pardon my language but all the crap went through like basically you know we didn't cover our tracks well enough and we were being tracked down by all of these different mercenaries who were trying to kill us or whatever and we were all on the run and and like we were sitting there and and like one by one like we, we, we were like kind of being tracked down and we were all racing together trying to like escape um imminent doom and we ended up in this skyscraper and, and and it was somebody's home, right? They had like a penthouse suite or something like that. So we we had locked ourselves in, and, and we were we were like protecting ourselves. And and like all of a sudden, like there were like helicopters, combat helicopters outside, blasting the windows. It was like the end of a movie, right? You know, you know, Gatling guns, you know, just like or mini guns, just just ripping apart the top. And we're like hiding in this bunker, and we're fighting these people, and these ninjas that are coming up from this uh, elevator and whatever. And it was like, and then we were kind of like, this is this is insane because like like there was like nothing we could do. Like every single time we like blew up a helicopter, another one came, and every single time we defeated one group of ninjas another group of ninjas jumped through the window it was like he just like he had just decided we weren't going to win and then so all of a sudden when when the chips were down we were just like you know everybody's hurt and we can't really move and we're just you know waiting to die um all of a sudden a ufo <laughs> a ufo comes like yeah literally like he says ufo comes and like flies around the skyscraper and like literally rams all of the helicopters that are outside and smashes them they blow up and then like ray beams came out of the ufo and started like incinerating the ninjas one by one and then uh and then like basically a gangplank came out of the ufo and and like this cloaked figure was like come on in and and we were like what and so of course we ran into the ufo and and then it was we we're like what's going on and like and, and then he said oh yeah it's like the ufo like takes off and leaves or whatever and um you're never heard from again and i was like what we we're all and we all kind of like looked around at each other and we're like what 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 do you mean we're never heard from again and he's like well it's like there was this there was a secret society they they were trying to you know contact uh alien intelligence and we were just like what and he's like yeah that's what they were doing uh, and and they wanted to create their own UFO, and and they wanted to like um, gather up people, and then now you're flying to their planet, and then that's the end of the campaign. And we just said, that, it's like, what are you talking about? Where, where did this even come from? And he's like, he's like, well, don't you get it? And he's like, and he starts listing off all these things. Like they needed the rust for this, they needed the 747 for this, they needed the titanium white paint for this. And they kind of listed off all these things. And it's like, don't you guys connect? And he's like, you, he's like, you guys are so stupid. Don't you realize what they were doing? And we were all just looking at each other. Like, we literally had no clue. None whatsoever. And, and that one wasn't so much bad <laughs> as it is just kind of one of those things where we're like, oh, <laughs> whatever. And, and, like, and then he was like, Ben was incensed that we, we, we didn't catch on. That, that that was the process and that's what we were going through and he was just he was like just he was just like i can't believe you guys are so stupid i can't believe you didn't connect the dots and i mean and then to this day i remember like one of the smartest people i know my friend jason who usually is pretty you know 
pretty, pretty spot on on this stuff. And he was just like, I remember looking at his face, just this bewilderment on his face, just like, what, what? And I mean, and then, and then Ben left the group and we never played again. So that's not really exactly bad, but, but it ended horribly, but not so horribly that we still talk about it. So I guess that's not so bad, right? We at least have a good memory. But still, it was just kind of like, we were just going through the motions of these different missions. It was basically like a, uh, a TV episode show kind of thing that had no, like, and then the final episode was, was like the final episode of The Prisoner, where you have absolutely no clue what's going on. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look at The Prisoner. All right, so, um, uh, next up. Uh, so this is one uh, where I, you know, again, um, people had the best of intentions, uh, and they they, they uh, went into this with 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 a wonderful idea and and a, and a wonderful thought process, but but things just um, like you know went off the tracks uh, relatively quickly. And uh, this was once again uh, Shadowrun. <laughs> so in this Shadowrun campaign, and this is weird, all three of these stories, none of them um, have to deal with D and I don't know, maybe it's just because we just managed to get D and D going well. But anyway, regardless. So this is about Shadowrun, again. So Jason, my aforementioned uh, friend that I just mentioned, he had this idea, he's like, come up with your characters, create whatever you want, um, this is gonna be great. You know, it's just like, it doesn't matter what you make, it'll, we're gonna make it work. And so, okay, so we all went off, we used our, like took a day, took all of our source books, made our stuff. I, I went classic, uh, like, um, troll bruiser guy had a panther assault cannon you know just like had dermal plating all over the place just like built to just basically just take take bullets and and protect the rest of the party and i was excited to play it and so we um we started the game up and and like the first thing he did was is that we all like were like paid a ton of money to come to this hospital or something in mexico and we're like all right cool and, and we go to this hospital and um, they're like, okay, well, we need to, uh, uh, we we need to, you undergo this procedure, um, and this is going to like, you know, like make you faster and stronger. And we're like, okay, sounds good, right? So we undergo the procedure, and then when we come to, they're saying, we're sorry that we we lied to you. Actually, what we did was we implanted a cranial bomb <laughs> in each one of you, and uh, uh, you need to do what we tell you. And at that moment, the party just rebelled against uh against jason like we literally were like oh okay fine and i remember um i think it was my buddy matt basically he got his guns and he was just like and he grabbed the first doctor and he goes take the cranial bomb out of my head he says i can't all right i shoot him in the head and i grab the next doctor and i say take the cranial bomb out of my head and, and, and that just started the, the ball rolling slowly down the hill. And it just kept, and we, we fully expected, like, eventually one of our heads to, you know, pop and explode. And that would be the end of it, right? And we'd be like, okay, make new characters kind of thing. But Jason just didn't have that happen. And we were just like, you need to take the bomb out of our head. Or we were waiting for them to call our bluff or us to call their bluff. And it's like, we didn't actually do that or anything like that. And he had this idea that this was gonna work. And so we were just like, one by one. And we got to the point where people were like barricading themselves in the hospital as we were like going one by one. Um, my buddy Brad had, had made a mage and he summoned a fire elemental. <laughs> started the hospital on fire and we said we go outside and we stake out each exit of the hospital and as people come running out of the burning building we kill them and <laughs> that was it that was the entire campaign um and i'm laughing but i mean that was also one of those things where jason probably put a heck of a lot of work into that and and we basically excuse my language shit canned it uh from the very beginning uh by just like because we just did not like the fact that basically we we didn't want to be forced into doing something and i and i think it was one of those that that mind process of like you know jason uh should have used a different carrot um uh, to to lead us I, I he was always a really big fan of um like the escape from new york and escape from los angeles uh he was a fan of those movies and uh, you know and and i think he liked the whole snake plissken has to do this or else he's gonna die kind of thing and i think he tried to apply that uh to a shadow run game but instead what it was it was a it was a one session and done uh situation all right so now However, uh, uh, the, the, probably the, the, the worst, like, barely got off the ground and ended campaign I was ever involved with. Um, 
uh, that that like. Uh, thankfully, nobody ever brings this up, and and you know, and and because uh, it, it was it ended really poorly, and, and we don't want to hurt people's feelings, so we, we don't bring it up. But we, there was a campaign where um, uh, we had played a lot of BattleTech, as I said, we played a ton of BattleTech as kids, and and we were excited. Uh, once MechWarrior came out, we, we we goofed around with it a little bit. It was kind of like a glorified Car Wars in a way where you can have Car Wars, um, your, your, your drivers or characters, those sorts of things. And um, we were uh, excited to play it, but um, it was it was something where timing and whatever just didn't work. But I remember um, the, the person running the game, they spent a ton of time um, researching into the, the the world, and if you ever get a chance to really dive into the world of Mech Warrior or BattleTech and all the different uh, houses and factions and stuff, it's really really good stuff. But they took the time to like really research into this, and they came up with this idea of uh, having uh, us being in a uh, like a, a mercenary group um, that would be for hire uh, for all these different houses. And as they as as we gain prestige in battle and power in battle. Uh, we would, um, uh, you know, one of those things where um, we would, uh, like, get more and more uh, options as far as who'd want to hire us and, and who'd want to uh, employ us. And so we were super excited. And so, and the idea was, is that there would be, like, one of the group, and this actually happened to be Jason, one of the group that would be our leader, our captain, our general. And then the rest of us uh, would, you know, like be, you know, like whatever. Like we, he'd be the general or captain or whatever, and then we'd be, you know, his his troops. And so I remember he got a super cool mech, like a Marauder, like a you know big giant seventy five ton mech, you know, with the big arms and stuff like that, with the like the particle projection cannons and, you know, totally uh, outfitted. And the rest of us, the rest of the players, got like. 40 or 50 ton mechs uh, that weren't as powerful, maybe like a rifleman, um, and you know, maybe an archer, a uh, shadow hawk. You know, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So, so the opening thing was it was like uh, uh, Jason had to test our metal in battle, right? And so it was going to be like him against us uh, on the uh, in, in like, and they were we were going to be battling, um, and it would be all. Uh, um, uh, virtual like so we wouldn't actually be destroying our max right and the, he wanted to see how good we were and and what we didn't know is what the players didn't know is that uh like th the game was rigged so um no matter how much damage uh jason's mech took it would never fall apart it would never like m malfunction it would never he would never lose and so he would just sit there and and and, and blast each person down right so great idea but uh, what the person didn't realize running that 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 campaign was that um, four mechs of like forty to sixty tons each can easily take down one mech that has like an eighty ton mech, no matter how good that mech is. And you, know, you got four people blasting on one thing, um, and unless they're all really tiny, they can be killed with one shot. They're going to win that battle, and so as like his Marauder mech just kept on taking damage and damage and damage. He was just like staying up and staying up and staying up so much that the battle lasted so long because he couldn't defeat the other people fa quickly. Like the, the person running the game finally just was like, well, you guys can just handle this. I'm going to go watch TV. And so they got up and they went to the couch and just watched TV. Like two hours later, <laughs> when the battle was like finally over and, 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 and the, the, the cheat was revealed, um, they were like, oh, ta-da, you weren't supposed to win. And what the players were like, this sucks, this is stupid, why did we spend four hours doing this battle? Um, this was absolutely ridiculous, is this how the rest of the campaign is going to run? And um, and then the, the referee at that point like realized, they were like, or the person running the game was like, uh, you know, I just realized that this is what this is going to be. It's going to be like a four hour long battle and maybe an hour of role playing each session. That's not really what I want to do, I don't really want to do this. And they just canceled the campaign at that point. And if you hadn't guessed, the person running that game in that situation has two thumbs and was this guy. And I had spent 
literally hundreds of dollars on all those Mech Warrior source books and things like that. And I was just totally entranced by the idea of running a Mech, Mech Warrior campaign. And um, it died on the vine quickly and mercifully. And thankfully, none of my players ever bring it up, which I, maybe they've forgotten about it. I, I don't know, it stays fresh in my mind. But it taught me a good lesson. It taught me a very good lesson. Less is more. And I think most people can learn that. And I'll talk more about less is more in another uh, another one of these uh, videos again. So anyway, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this and for story time. Um, if you got any ideas for uh, videos or stories or whatever that you'd like to hear, by all means, ask away. I'll be happy to, to try to do those as possible. And expect uh, some more of these this week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.